This episode of the PC Perspective Podcast is brought to you by Lenovo. See more at Lenovo.com. Hey everybody, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 406, being recorded on June 29th, 2016. I'm Ryan Shrout. I'm a sunburn Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. And I'm Alan Malentano. None of us here would know what sunburn feels like. Yeah, we're all very well tanned uh, yeah. individuals that don't have any skin complexion issues to deal with outside. Yeah, I so that's why I figured you'd commiserate with me. <laughs> it's uh, it's been a busy day here. We've had <coughs> this is our second live stream of the day. And I'm sorry to say nobody on this uh, panel is as interesting or as uh, accredited or uh, that I like as much as uh, Raja Kadori. That was here and an international man of mystery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know what I always I felt bad for poor Stephen at the end of the at the end of the table. He was there the whole time, just basically Raja and I kind of go back and forth. And I was like, all right, come on, let's talk about software. But he did get to drink bourbon with us. That's true. On the live That's stream, true. Uh, if you didn't watch the live stream uh, that we had Raja in studio, um, if you go to PCPro.com and search for his picture that is on 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 that news post, I just <laughs> embedded the video. <laughs> Uh, of the of the stream that we recorded, it's about an hour long. Very interesting discussion. We talk a little bit about the RX 480, but more about um, the future direction of Radeon and what his plans are for a whole bunch of different stuff. So it's it's really really interesting. I'd encourage you guys to go uh, take a, a look at that. Um, we do record the show. If you, I mean, if you're listening to this, I'm assuming you're listening to this. We record the show on Wednesdays, uh, Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific at pcpro.com slash live. And uh, if you need a friendly reminder, if you need a little notification about, hey, we're about to do a live stream, you can go to pcpro.com slash subscribe. And when you do that, you'll get this little page here, that, uh, this little page right here for uh, shows your <laughs> name. <laughs> What is edit that out and post? That's fine. Um, Not my job anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> get your name and your email address, and we send you a, an email that says, hey, we're going to do a live stream. Now, this is important not just for our podcast that we do, but because we announced on Friday uh, about the live stream with Raja that was gonna, we were going to give away three Radeon RX 480s, which we already did. Uh, and then I sent another reminder on Wednesday morning about it. So everybody got a little heads up. So if you go to that URL, pcpro.com slash subscribe, and sign up for that notification list, uh, you will be better off because of it. Just in general, in your life, you're going to be, you're going to be better, better off. And you know what else would make you better off in life? Uh, if you thought, you know, hey, that interview with Raja was actually really cool. I've never seen anybody do that before. You know, he... A very high-level executive came in and wanted to talk not just about a specific product, but about their direction and their competition and what their stances were and a lot of different things. Yeah, um, you know, for us to be able to put on this kind of production, it costs money. The camera that recorded all the stuff that we did today True. costs a shit ton of money. Yeah. Like a shit how much did the bourbon money? cost? Uh, the bourbon was way less expensive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the bourbon was insignificant compared to the than camera. the camera. Um, and so, if you want to support the type of stuff that we are doing, um, we'd really appreciate it. We have a Patreon set up for this, which is basically a reader, viewer, listener uh, supported avenue for us to earn income that we can put into, you know, buying cameras like this, uh, buying churches, uh, things that are really important <laughs> to getting the job done. So, patreoncom per takes you to this page. Uh, and you can contribute a dollar a month, ten dollars a month, twenty five dollars a month, anything you want uh, towards our goals here, and uh, it goes directly to us. You know, minus a small processing fee for Patreon, uh, but that helps us. It, honestly, it helps us in two ways. One is we are able to do uh, a more better content. You know, afford upgraded cameras, doing 4K video, all that type of stuff, and it also lets us know that there's people out there watching, people out there that care and want to want us to continue to produce this type of stuff. And it, you know, we can go to to the people at AMD and say, look, we had this much success from when Raja came out. We we, we had a, a a great interview and a lot of great feedback. We have a bunch of people listening and watching. We want you to come out and do this type of stuff on a regular basis. So, and I and I will put forth the same offer I have for many weeks now. If you make a new contr contribution or increase your contribution uh, while we're recording the live stream, I will read your name. Probably there was one name that I refused to read because they only really increased their contribution by like two cents or something like that. Anyway, um, uh, live on, on the air here, so uh, you can you can look forward to that as well. So nickel and diamonds instead. Uh, I would prefer yeah. dollar and five dollars. 
but you know i make it rain it's fine it's fine yeah raining quarters is painful <laughs> raining ten dollar bills as josh would know is quite nice yeah yeah so you got that paper cut yeah that's that's me and my alimony to the ex-wife <laughs> oh he just okay, drops off have an a bag of singles yeah. every time. Yes. Yeah, my the decade is still young. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's you know what? There's there's some scotches out there that you know good for grand. I think what the forty year uh, Glen Livet. Um, I'm I'm still trying to get a hold of. I I really want to buy a bottle of the Pappy Twenty. Um, mm. I have I have coming around to that time of the year again though, isn't it? Uh, I think we already November. passed. Oh, is ah. it okay? And I, I found I found somebody that would willing uh, I found a maybe unscrupulous bartender that was willing <laughs> to sell me an unopened bottle, um, but it was like four hundred bucks, um, which is a just That's an, a steal. It's a it's an astronomical amount of money, but it's actually way less than where it's listed at online. Uh, yeah. Me and yeah. a buddy of mine were looking online, and like a bottle of twenty is like eight hundred to nine hundred bucks. Easy crazy. Uh, for that, so it's it seems insane. I don't think I like drinking that much yet, but it, you know, it just depends on how the rest of the month goes. You kind of have to really enjoy drinking. To, <laughs> to go so for buy that. it, resell it, and then buy a couple of bottles of cheaper stuff. That's yeah, true. yeah, like this. I think this um, this this is 1792 small batch. This is uh, it's made by the Bartons um, here in Bardstown, um, and it's um, it's like 45 bucks. Yeah, I think it? it's like 45, 50 bucks That's a so bottle. Bad. Yeah, and, it, and it's really good. I think I think I made Raja a bourbon drinker, he said mm-hmm. at the end of it. But uh But not until his next card comes out. Right. He's not allowed he he vowed on our on our show that he was not going to drink until until I see Vega. Mhm. Until they show me Vega. You're going to get a frantic phone call I know. late one night. We got to get you got to come out here. You gotta come <laughs> got to come out here. You got to go. Vega launches right 2 months early. We, we need to do a Skype call right now. <laughs> here, here, here. I'll show look you at, anything. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> not anything raja just the card just the cards yes uh, yes that's awesome all right so, so before we get into content let oh, me ask yeah. you this okay are are you going to be getting the moto g fourth gen from uh, amazon and checking that out no no it sits there uh brand new 199 buck uh unlocked did that just did it, did it just get announced <sighs> you have to ask that <laughs> Yes, uh, it, pretty much. I think it's it was. I don't Moto, know when the Moto G it. fourth gen. Uh, let's see, Prime exclusive. Oh, huh. Oh, okay. No, I had I had not seen this at all yet. I've been kind of busy the last couple of days, Josh. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that. Um, well, you know, I was, I was looking uh, at something for my wife because she she has bashed the living crap out of the <laughs> one, and she's still got like six months yeah. on her. Uh, her thing, and I was wondering if this, uh, you know, worked with Verizon would be decent. And yeah, I, I, uh, Moto sends us some stuff. I'll, I'll see if they'll, we'll get a look at that. Yeah, 150 bucks is a pretty good deal. Uh, in, nice. the, in the chat, USS Rover asks, uh, or tells me that Telemore do Irish whiskey is very good. I actually have a bottle oh, of I that swear by it. in my freezer right now. So, um, <laughs> it's, uh, yes. I also approve of that. But let's get into the content this week. Obviously, the big story is the Radeon RX 480. Um, this is – it's like a product we've been talking about for a damn year Yep. in terms of Polaris architecture this, Polaris 10 GPU that. Uh, it's finally out. It's finally here. What we have is the Radeon RX 480, uh, the Polaris Promise. It's coming up with subtitles for this type of stuff really kind of becomes difficult. You should be a science point. fiction writer. At least you stayed away from the pun generator this time. Damn it, I knew I forgot something. Mm. That actually worked really well out in the Huawei review. Thank it you did. very much. Um, there are a few North Star jokes you could have made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about it. What do we what what do we know today that we didn't know before? Obviously, with performance and power consumption, we'll talk about. Um, it is uh, Polaris 10 GPU. It's a 14 nanometer part. It's AMD's first FinFET graphics chip out on the market. Um, 2,304 stream processors, 144 texture units, uh, 32 ROPs. And if you look at this table on the first page of a review, you can kind of compare it to the R9 390, compare it to the R9 380, and, and really see how, how it stacks up um, in relation to a bunch of these different things, right? So it has fewer shader cores than the R9 390, but it actually runs at a higher clock speed. Uh, it has fewer texture units and ROPs as well. But it does run at higher memory speed, and it. But again, it has half of the memory interface, 256 bit instead of 512 bit, um, 
and obviously almost half of the power consumption. It goes from a 275 watt TDP part to 150 watt TDP part, but both are rated at the same 5.1 teraflop kind of theoretical peak compute. Um, it is worth noting that uh, it is 5.7 billion transistors instead of 6.2 billion. So it's actually a, a shrinking in the transistor count, but not by a dramatic amount, uh, really. And you keep in mind that the architecture is mostly unchanged, um, that a lot, most things are, are relatively kind of the same from GCN third gen to GCN fourth gen with, with a couple of minor exceptions. And that all, that all kind of makes sense. There's one thing worth noting here uh, as I highlight the clock speed. Um, starting with Polaris, AMD will have two clock speeds with their GPUs, one, ba one base, one boost, mm -hmm. um, which is what NVIDIA has had since the GTX 680. And the idea is now that AMD has properly implemented adaptive clocking so that they can raise the um, kind of the minimum performance or the expected performance on average for most games while uh, compensating for power hungry power virus applications by lowering clock speeds accordingly. Right. So, you know, like the what was like 7950 boost was a yeah. card that came out and it was like, oh, it's uh, it's boosted by 50 megahertz. And all it really did was just run 50 megahertz faster than the last one. It didn't really do anything like GPU boost did and no parts really did, uh, except for maybe, you know, you take a look at the R9 Nano, uh, but it's really built into the Polaris architecture from its from its ground up. Um, and so what they list as the base clock is 1120 and they list their boost clock is 1266. It's different than how NVIDIA does it because on AMD's Polaris GPUs, the base clock is the average clock speed over extended use across a host of games at different resolutions and synthetic tests. So, so for AMD, base is like what you should get. Yes. Okay. Right. And the 1266 boost number is the maximum. Like the the highest clock speed you will get at default, no overclocking, you know, the highest DPM state. Uh, so so the, the boost is not necessarily like where it's going to ride continuously? No. Okay. Yeah. It's more like best case scenario. Okay. Great cooling, great cooler on the card. Um, this is as high as it will go type of thing. Okay. Um, and so that's a little bit different there because NVIDIA's base clock is kind of the number they promise you won't go under in any game. Right. And then the boost clock is kind of like the typical we expect you to see this or above or around that in games. So NVIDIA's boost is kind of equivalent to AMD's base. Correct. Okay. That's, how, that's how I see it, yes. Um, and so it... Either way is kind of interesting, except it's a little bit disappointing on the AMD part not to know outright what number is like the minimum that they promise you will be able to get, right. you know, with that cooling solution, with this power consumption, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's a little disappointing. But in reality, as long as it is, you know, we're keeping tr track of this stuff and they're clocking at or above, you know, base clock all the time, then, then that's fine. Uh, the other complication is that they're le releasing four gigs and eight gigs cards, four gig and eight gig cards, but they're actually all the same mm -hmm. PCB. So if you bought a four gig uh, RX 480 today, the chances are very, very good that you would, in theory, be able to flash it with a VBIOS and make it an eight gig card because they just made one piece of one PCB, one card, whole design, one, one whole design uh, and just kind of split it up on SKUs. And that's why you'll see the vast majority of cards for sale are going to be the $239 eight gig models as opposed to the $199 uh, four gig models because they're just throwing away four gigs of memory and $40 every time they sell. But, it, but it's also slower. Kit. It also clocks the memory a little lower, yeah, right? Yeah, it's running at seven gigabits per second instead of eight. So is there potential bidding going on there? Like maybe just the memory just didn't qualify? I mean, it's possible. Like if I were going to pick cards, yeah. but you would think you would qualify those before you put them on a PCB. Uh, I get it. Yeah. Right? So I, I would guess, if I were to guess... Every one of those four gig cards running at seven gigabits could run at eight gigabits. If Probably. I were just to hazard a guess, I haven't seen any issues or any uh, stories yet of people, you know, obviously cards just went on sale today, of people buying cards, getting V BIOSes and flashing them and it working yet. So I'll be curious to see if that actually kind of pretty sure it's gonna up. it's gonna be a thing. I would I'm imagine. Pretty sure. I mean, they gave media the V BIOS to switch our model between the four gig and eight gig and back and forth. So we could do our testing. Yeah. So the likelihood of that fi uh, magically finding its way out into the public is about a hundred percent. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how that, how that pans out. Um, architecturally, uh, nothing super 
drastic in the changes here. If you if you want to see what did change, there's some tessellation improvements. Um, there is some shader efficiency, but not shader throughput mm -hmm. improvements. Did they add uh, uh, half precision floating and 16 yep. bit integer. Yep, they added 16 bits or 16. Uh, yes, both floating and integer 16 bit. <laughs> Support um, support for something called shader intrinsic functions, which is interesting. About you have the ability to insert um, assembly code directly into your application without having to do your entire application assembly code. So okay. if you know about a way to do something much faster than you could in DirectX, you have the ability to just kind of do it now, huh. which is something consoles have apparently had access to for a while. Uh, which is interesting. They, they you know they updated Delta color compression and that type. So of this stuff. is like something just part of their driver infrastructure. I guess the shader intrinsic. It is. Um. It yeah. It's okay. Because it, it's available in DX11, 12, and Vulkan. Uh. It, as they say, it enables performance critical functions execution. Uh. Executed as exactly as developers intended. Sure. And it is, it is a console style programming kind of methodology. Yeah. Um, if it's if you're doing something a whole lot of times in a row, you it. It behooves you to optimize the crap out of that yes. little, yeah, yeah, yeah. little silver code. And if you yeah. are a developer that is confident in doing that and you know how to do it better than the high level, the high level, you know, yeah. language that you're in, um, then you have the the option to do that. So that's that's neat. Cool. Um, asynchronous compute changes. They've added a different hardware scheduler uh, or an additional hardware scheduler for that. So that's uh, that's something to look forward to. Um, they have DP 1.3, DP 1.4. They're ready. They're not certified because there's no standards yet. Um, that's supporting 4K 120 hertz or 5K 60 hertz. Uh, HDR capabilities. Um, they have. But still no way to use HDR, really. Yeah. I mean, Nothing uses HDR. On yes, PCs. they support it, but we don't have the way to, to test it or, or use it because Ken had an HDR TV in, in so the office. So couldn't do anything with so it. So disappointing. Uh, and we talked about the adaptive clocking. That's kind of the, the big power. Um, efficiency change here. They've added in adaptive power clocking. I'm sorry, they've added in adaptive clocking for power management. Um, and as a result, they're able to get better clock speeds throughout the entire voltage curve uh, than they would have been able to before. They do do some other stuff that's interesting that um, I didn't really spend a whole lot of time on. Boot time power supply calibration, which is basically uh, they run a voltage analysis at the factory, like when it is built, when the cart is built, mm -hmm. and they log the voltage as seen there by the integrated power supply stuff. And then they run the same code each time the PC boots. Okay. And they observe that voltage, and then they change the offset as necessary. Huh. Um, Do you know they, they had introduced this with, uh, what was the latest, Bristol Ridge yeah. coverage that yep. I did uh, a couple of months ago? Yep. Uh, I think it was same just basic this month. technology. Um, but yeah, and they also added in adaptive aging compensation, which basically uses the same thing. So um, they claim the GPUs require two to three percent clock speed margin to accommodate transistor aging. So they they r run this voltage check, do self calibration, and in theory, this is something you obviously can't test immediately. You get more robust operation over time, and out of the box performance is improved. It also yeah, means, in theory, that over time your card will draw more power. Yeah. Right. Or reduce speed. No, right. it's going to draw more power. Yeah, the idea well, is to maintain speed, and yeah, it's yeah. going to draw more power in order to to keep performance at the same level. You're yeah, going to say something, Jeremy, uh, without crashing. Yeah, yeah. So what? Uh, how how AMD and and everybody else essentially does it is they apply more power to the GPU to kind of offset that in advance. Right. So that five years down the line, if you're by chance still using the same graphics card. Those transistors, if they've been used, you're going to get some electro migration. You're going to get some other, you know, material type issues that requires more voltage to be put through there. And so AMD, NVIDIA, Intel, everybody, they apply more voltage than is actually needed to kind of compensate for that mm. in the future. So they say, hey, we're going to think that this card's going to last seven years. We know that they degree, degrade at, at this uh, percent, you know, per year. So we've got to apply this amount of voltage. So in initially, you're going to get far less power. Well, not far, but but you know anywhere from five to six percent less power draw at the beginning than you will at the end of the life of this product. So that's kind of a nice little savings and and, and tuning on their part. Uh, agreed. Some other feature changes. True Audio Next is kind of their answer to what Nvidia announced with Pascal. Uh, which is the path traced 
uh, GPU audio, GPU based audio, compute based audio. Mm-hmm. Um, uses asynchronous compute, of course. They're going to push that. Uh, one interesting note: tr- the true audio that you knew and loved, Josh. The DSP based audio. It is gone from this architecture. The DSP is no longer on Polaris, and any code that was written for true audio will not run on this on this product. So much for my my thief. The one addiction. Game? Yeah. On AMD GPUs. <laughs> Yeah, so that was odd, but okay. Uh, they do compute reservation. They add variable rate shading, which is very, very similar to uh, NVIDIA's multi-res shading that they announced with the GTX 980 Ti. Um, I'm going to be really honest with you. The uh, True Audio Next, the compute unit reservation, and variable rate shading all seem like things that AMD added because Pascal launched and kind of added those same things, right? They taught... NVIDIA talked about VRSLI or VR uh, audio. Yep. Uh, uh, what did they, they call it? Was it VR audio? VR works. Or yeah, it was VR works. VR works like a suite, audio. But yeah, yeah I think like it's VR audio. A VR compute audio. reservation, that's something that actually I think NVIDIA has had uh, in Maxwell, the fact that you could dedicate a, a number of, of CUDA cores mm-hmm. to a task uh, before application began and you had like a, a deterministic amount of performance each time you came around. And then obviously variable rate shading is the equivalent of what multi-res shading was. NVIDIA has actually kind of moved past multi-res shading and into uh, simultaneous multi-projection, yep. right? So they've, they've kind of uh, moved past what that is. So we'll have to see what any of that turns into. They did talk about multi-GPU. Uh, Raja confirmed today that they will continue to support three-way and four-way GPUs um, uh, with the RX 480. I think the RX 470 and 460 the lower-end cards will only do two, but that's that's fine. Um, but kind of renewed commitment for multi-GPU configurations from Raja today. They do have, you know, they talked about at the editor's day an AFR frame pacing, which is uh, based on this diagram, still kind of confusing to me. I don't. I don't know if the green is frame one of rendering or frame run of display. No, that's that's the rendering, and then D is the delay, and then P is the present to but, but the what, buffer and monitor. So the P's are but, evenly but see, spaced. But that's what confuses me is because present is like what the game okay, is the so terminology for the game is, engine. Look at frame one. It finishes frame one in that green spot, right? Yeah. But when they're matching up with the monitor. They then delay that output, and then P is the present. Well, frame two is a really quick, um, you know, uh, uh, rendering. Sure. It has a longer delay, but then it hits the present. And so basically, you're having a smoother AFR frame rate that is more consistent because they're adding that delay in there right. at certain times to to make it just, you know, instead of having – one at five nanoseconds and the next one at 12 nanoseconds um or is it milliseconds milliseconds and uh yeah and 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 getting that kind of stuttering back and forth they're sure. they're keeping it at more like you know eight and nine milliseconds i just yeah. the the term present does not generally Presents refer the wrong term, to yeah. the refresh cycle yeah if that's what that is it's it earlier in the pipeline but if it's present it's more like del- if if it's if if it means present, then the delay is more of a back pressure into the game to pace out the game's no, internal they're, rendering. They're drawing it at the they're putting the P at the end of the renders, at the end of like the delay, delay and the render. Yeah. So that's Yeah, so you're finishing the render in the frame. That should be and the then d- you get the delay and then it presents. So you believe that's buffer. draw. That should you be the be, draw out the to refresh. the display. Okay. Yeah. I think that's it's, what they're trying to do there. It's not a good Yeah. Yeah, they do say before yeah. each present to the display. That's just not the right terminology. So you just, that the other thing saying. you have to realize, whenever you do something, some kind of paste thing like that, you are adding delay. Like, you yeah. are adding lag. I mean, clearly, the they're, they're inserting yeah. a bar called D for delay. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I, all now, pacing does that. Yeah. You can you can tweak I mean, it so that it's I, better. Ideally, but. you would adjust it so that it was as the smallest amount possible. Yes. In order to it, achieve the goal. Most right? people don't realize any kind of latency if it's below 20 milliseconds. It's when you get above that that you really start to notice yeah. that. And when you're doing triple buffering, you yeah. hit well above 20 millisecond. Uh, another interesting thing that they've uh, launched along with the RX 480 is an update to their Radeon settings software. Uh, they've they've cha- gone is overdrive, and I think we can all agree, thank God. Yeah. yeah. Right? Uh, this and looks nice. Wattman. It's such I, a bad name. It's not a good name. Yeah, well. It makes more sense when they said it, it, it is a power management software, and it's actually Watt Manager. 
when you, hey, you know what? When when Athlon name was released, did you think it was cool? No, I didn't. I thought it sucked. Yeah, no, but, but Athlon wasn't half of a meme. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh, uh, whatever. Does the does the whatever. original uh, Batman series music play when you open this? Yeah, it should. Uh, okay. It's probably a licensing issue. Um, the. Uh, the idea is, is is great, though, and actually the implementation is really good, too. Uh, it is an overclocking power management tool uh, built into the driver. And you can do a global settings. You can do per game settings. You can log data on a per settings level as well. Um, and if you look here at the screenshot, like you can actually see a histogram of, and it's reporting to you. Let me zoom in a little bit here. It's reporting activity uh, percentage-wise, GPU clock, memory clock, temperature, um, and even your fan speeds. Right, and so you get all that up top. It scrolls by in real time. You can mouse over and read all the data. Um, the orange section here is your GPU overclocking. You can change. Um, you can change the DPM curve based on percentage. You can change it manually. You can just drag those dots up and down. Um, you can take it all the way up to 1600, which I think is probably a bad idea. Probably. Uh, probably not a good idea. I think 1600 was the highest. Might lead to crashing. Uh, underneath that, you actually have voltage control. And you can actually manually change voltage points huh. in here. That's, this is when you get, you know, if you're the crazy person in your, in sure, your field, sure. right? Um, How does it handle crashes? Are they better at handling it's crashes? It's much better now? now. You will have to reboot your machine, but when you reboot it, um, it says, it, you know, a pop-up comes up and says, hey... We've noticed you've had a problem. I don't yeah. know what it says exactly, but <laughs> it goes back. It appears you're having a problem overclocking, and it reverts back everything. Um, cool. And it keeps it keeps some of the settings uh, that don't affect performance, like power target and fan speeds. Right. But it will reset voltages and clocks. Okay. So makes sense. Yeah. You always want to be able to recover. We can without... export profiles out of this one. I don't because that makes more sense case. to me to do it this way than it does for the overdrive where it was. Yeah, I, I don't really care about your profile, dude. It's right. two variables. I don't know. That's well, a good three. idea if they don't do it. I'll, I'll make sure yeah. I bring that up. But here you can see like where you can control voltages to um, so like 1.131 volts. I tried to get them to type in 4 volts immediately during the video today. And for some, <laughs> they didn't want to do it. I don't, I don't uh, really understand. It's, yeah, it's a good, Maybe it's a good thing. That they, well, you know. Yeah. Uh, memory overclocking is here. You can change your frequency. You can change your voltage. Um, it's a little odd that it's it's presented in the same way the GPU clock is presented in like multiple DPM states. Right. But there's only one state for the memory. And right? it's either on or it's idle or it's on. It's idle or it's on. Yeah. Um, so it seems weird. And you can adjust fan speeds. You can adjust uh, uh, temperature controls, max, target temp, uh, power limit percentages, very similar to what we've seen on NVIDIA's uh, GPU boost-based overclocking. There is one odd setting here, and I'm going to click on this image and get a zoom-in version so I can show you this. Underneath fan, there's one called minimum acoustic limit in megahertz. What, do you, what would you think that would do? An now? acoustic limit in megahertz? Look, See, look at that picture. That means that if you run it at, at 910 megahertz, you're not going to have any fan noise whatsoever. That is not correct. Damn. Huh. So does it pump out white for noise? People, in like the... really high pitched noises? <laughs> no. White noise in the opposite waveform? Does yeah, it sound like you have tinnitus? A little. A little. <laughs> so what this what this setting is, if you change this to manual and you can adjust the 910 megahertz on a slider, that is your minimum frequency that the card will not go below okay and the reason they have the acoustic limit is that basically overrides if your if your gpu is going to go below that number mm -hmm. the frequency right the controller is allowed to increase fan speed even if you have told it not to go above a certain fan speed if it goes below so if you were hovering at 910 megahertz right and you started to go below it yeah. the fan speed would go up and oh. keep you at 910. Okay. Even if you had said in your fan speed minimum and targets, don't ever go above this fan speed. Okay. Right? Now, so don't set that to your maximum overclock then. <laughs> well, th what I find interesting here is I would imagine some people might try, and this is something I need to experiment with, is if you change that setting to 1,000 yeah. or 1,100, We'll just crank like, the if fans, you want to like, make that 1120 uh, base clock that's more of a typical clock yeah. actually your base clock, yeah. can you do it? And then what is the effect on sound levels um, on, on your on If you your go car? too high, it might just 
run the fan at max. It might, and that would be unfortunate because yeah. it's 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 a blower style fan. It's going to be pretty pretty loud. Yeah. But I, I actually want to I want to do some more overclocking and play with that level because that that to me is almost like the base clock on Nvidia's products. But that's 910 megahertz is really low. Yeah. So I I would be surprised if you know if I couldn't set that to a thousand or something like that mm-hmm. to a gigahertz and and and, and do it that way. Is there an override for idle? Uh, I don't think so. You can set yeah. a minimum um, fan speed, at least. But but if you dip below that clock speed, then it's gonna crank it up again. Oh, I'm sure it means when it's in its highest DPM state. Okay, when that, it's that's its more what I mean point. is because yeah, when you're idling, yeah. it's it'd be Correct. nice for it to idle down where it wants yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, that would be okay. That would be. Uh, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> um, so I did some quick overclocking. I'll be honest with you, the overclocking of this card was a little bit disappointing. I was only able to push about 3.5% out of it, which basically took that boost clock rating from 1266 to 1310, a 44 megahertz uh, increase. Um, obviously, that's not going to result in a huge amount of gaming performance improvements, uh, but we we did notice some other stuff. So this is your clock speed um, uh, variance levels at stock. Right, the blue line is your frequency, and the orange line is temperature. And you can see at stock at default, uh, 80, 80, 80C is kind of the target and the max right there. And, and the frequency kind of hovers, kind of normalized at about 1220 megahertz or so. Not too bad. 1215, I think, is where we were at. When we did all of our overclocking, increased the temperature up to 90C, increased power target by up to 30%, and then did our 3.5% overclocking. See how much more variable the clocks got on this? All right, look at look at the smoothness of that blue line versus the smoothness of that blue line. It, or, it, or the lack of smoothness. The lack of smoothness, right? So there's a lot of jumping around in this GPU. So for, for me, uh, this is likely indicative that you need a better cooler if you want to have any chance of having a consistent clock speed when overclocked. Yep. Um, and if you want to do anything else, like, and there was even a little bit of a, of a negative feedback to this. Like if you look at our hitman results at 25 by 14, um, overclocked is the orange line. Black is the stock line. They're evenly matched in terms of average frame rate, which is, is a little bit confusing. You expect there to be some difference, right? But if you actually look at your frame variance, the overclocked result is higher than the stock. Now it's not enough at any of this to be, um, a problem. I don't think, right? Like you're, you're not even barely getting past two milliseconds of variance it's, at like the 98th percentile, right? It's, it's like the card's trying to go faster, but it's really yeah. just kind of spinning its wheels and going up and down. And if you if you look speed. at like this section here, the black line again being stock, the orange line being yeah. overclocked. And you can, you can tell. You can see that the frame times are kind of tracking with uh, the clock speed variances. And it didn't yeah. happen in every game. Uh, in some games I saw, you know, kind of your normal 2 3% overclock performance improvements sure uh, but in hitman we didn't see that and e- even with all the the back and forth kind of the variance we still did average a, a, a slightly higher you know a 40 megahertz higher clock speed when overclocked um, so there's gonna be some more um so it's like you, it's like you, you can that. overclock it but you turn dial but then it turns around and regulates you, know, you back down yeah and, and one of the fixes for that could just be to turn your fan speed up to 100 yeah. percent or something like that and but to me that's not realistic to how people should have to use sure. their cards or aftermarket cooling right like. or we wait for the aftermarket coolers to come out and see what changes uh in that regard uh, we've already looked at the reference card last week nothing's changed here blower style design uh, no dvi connection which is maybe a concern for some people um a little bit on the loud side. It's a blower design, as you would expect. The 970 result there is a custom card. It's not a reference card, so it's not a, a super fair comparison. Um, one single six-pin power connector, which will be interesting as the weeks go on. Um, <laughs> yes. And, it's going to be interesting as this review goes on. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Also yeah. true. So let's look at uh, – I don't look at benchmarks here necessarily. Um, I'll look at – let's look at two real fast. Fallout 4. Um, here you can see, do do do. Uh, this is actually a bad one to pick, but the 390 and the R9 390, the RX 480, and the GTX 970 are kind of all in the same space here. The GTX 970 has a slight edge. Um, the, the R9 380 and the GTX 960 are really not even competitive, and that's what we've seen throughout the basically the entirety of this review. Um, and again, you can kind of see the 390, 480, and 970 all kind of clustered up there. Uh, and you get an idea of 
what is generally the behavior here. In DX11 games, we've saw the R9 390 and the RX480 kind of matching performance. 390 maybe a little bit ahead. Um, and in some other games, uh, let's take a look at the, oops, the Witcher 3 here. The, uh, scroll down to the end, where, you know, the, the R9, or uh, the RX480 is, you know, 8 to 9% faster than the GTX 970, right? So that, that's good. Um, it actually gets expanded on quite dramatically when we look at DX12 games, and we saw this in all three DX12 games we used, Gears of War, Hitman, and Rise of the Tomb Raider. If you look at these, these results, like the green and the black bar at the top there, you know, hovering around 80 frames per second is the R9 380 and the RX 480. Okay. The blue line all the way down at 60 is the GTX 970. Huh. That's a really, really big drop. What's the percent work out to? Uh, well, let me go down here. Yeah, 35% faster. Holy crap. Yeah, and it goes up to 41% at 25 by 14. And um, th that's the biggest one by far, the biggest advantage of, uh, uh, of the RX 480 compared to the 970. But if you look at um, this one, you're 23 and 29% over the 970. Huh. So in DX12, we're starting... Yeah. I, almost, I almost hate to say it because of all the crap that's been going on over the last time, but like the RX 480 is doing better in DX12 yeah. versus the competition than it is in DX11 yeah. versus the competition. And we've seen that over and over again. Um, and as DX12 games become more popular, that will be something to be concerned of. But... We don't know yet how this affects Pascal uh, from NVIDIA because we don't have any Pascal in this in this uh, in this price range, price range? quite yet. Hmm. So, yep. yeah. Uh, but at least AMD is getting some fruits of all their labor. They are. They are. You know, we'll see yeah. how big that window is. Hopefully, they get some space to 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 sell some cards and get some market share back. Yeah. Let's be kind of curious how uh, some Vulcan stuffs coming up. I mean, like uh, Doom. The Doom Vulcan <clears throat> patch will be out soon. Yeah. I yeah. Saying, I mean. Man. Uh, Essentially, that was, you know, AMD going to the OpenGL guys is like, uh, here, take yeah. this. Yeah. Enjoy the fruits of our labor, as you said. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about power consumption. No. Uh, okay. We're, we're trying to get through this damn thing. <laughs> um, I feel like we kind of have to mention something about this power is, consumption. This is an important thing to look at, right? So this is a big graph. I can't, uh, I can't zoom out. This so you guys built a really nifty power consumption measurement system, right? We did. So we're measuring, of that? we're measuring yeah, there, uh, right? we're measuring power at the card level. Uh, this right here, we're measuring oh. power at the card, not at the whole system. Lots, right? of, lots of sniff and so we, And we measure the power through the PCI Express bus versus the PCI Express uh, auxiliary power cables individually, as well. Now these numbers that we're showing you here are the totals, and this is all we're probably going to get into um, right now. Um, but so there's five lines on here. Here's what's important: the blue line, the gray line. And the yellow line are all kind of in this middle section here, right? They're all hovering around 150 watts. The blue line is the RX 480. The gray line is the RX 380. And the uh, uh, yellow line is the GTX 970. So they're all kind of using about the same amount of power. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, the R9 380 is crap performance compared to those two cards. <laughs> so, you know, that's bad for efficiency. Uh, the green line is the 960 at the bottom there. All the way up here is the R9 390. So remember, this is a 275-watt TDP part, and you can see by the end we're using about 260 watts yep. from the card compared to the 150-ish, 155 from uh, uh, the RX 480, and they're close to matching in performance levels. That's actually a pretty big deal yep. for, for AMD. The same is seen on Witcher 3 here. You see kind of like the three cards, the 480, the... 380 and the 970 kind of all hovering together, and then the orange card way higher power, and the green card way lower. Efficiency wise, that obviously is good news uh, for AMD. The overclocked power consumption is interesting as well. Now, keep in mind that we're talking about three and a half percent clock speed changes. Yeah. Right now, we've increased the power limit by 30 percent. Uh huh. Which apparently AMD just lets you just they're like sure fine go for it. Uh, the result is. The blue line where you're hovering kind of around 150 watts now jumps up to about 200 watts. Okay. So <laughs> what's interesting about that is you have a 150-watt TDP card uh -huh. now drawing the orange line overclocked uh, nearly 200 watts mm -hmm. or actually a little bit over 200 watts. But wait a minute, Ryan. But <laughs> but you, you would say, 
But Ryan, there's only a six pin PCI Express connector on so here. So those other two cards that were clustered together with it? Yes. What kind of power connectors did those two other two have? Uh, interestingly, the R9 380 has a single eight pin. Okay. And the GTX 970 has two six pin. Okay. Whereas the 480 has a single six the, pin. The RX 480 has a single six so, pin. So of connector. those three cards, the 480 has the lowest power input compared to its TDP. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Correct. So what's going to so give? Where does it? Where does it draw this magic power from? Is it the air? The air? Uh, yeah. It actually, if you sit near it, you kind of feel like this <laughs> it cools buzz. you off. You just start you feel feeling like, cold. <clears throat> it's like my little, hair started getting like power gray. You start, you start, I started getting wrinkles. You just get really tired the life out and of depressed. Me. Have you seen? Have Have you seen uh, powder? <laughs> powder. <laughs> you get struck by lightning. You get every, enough juice every for day a while. when I look in the mirror. Yeah. Um, and so we saw the same thing in Witcher Three, where it's drawing a whole lot more power. And um, I, we'll we'll just we'll just talk about it real quick here. The there is brewing controversy about how much power the RX 480 draws to the PCI Express bus mm -hmm. versus how much it draws from the PCI Express power cable, the six pin power cable. Right. Typically, GPUs when they go over their limits or even exceed the PCI limits. They will tend to do it on the external, like the power supply connector that goes straight to right. your GPU. Yeah, they will tend. Not, you don't have to go through a motherboard. You don't have to worry about other. Components I don't think we've ever stuff. seen one here in our in our testing since we did the the new power testing exceed the seventy five watt limit of the the slot. No, no. The only card I could think of that may have even gotten close is the seven fifty Ti, and that's because yeah. it didn't have external power. Right, and they were getting close to that seventy five watt. Uh, right. It had a 75 watt TDP, but they weren't going. Exactly. Over they weren't it. going over it, right? Um, so, however, <laughs> uh, this one is going over it, right? Uh, even in normal non-overclocked scenarios, we're seeing, you know, 80 to 85 watts sometimes being drawn through that through the 12 volt through connector. the 12 volt connector, not counting the 3.3 volt, which is only rated at like thing. 65 actually out of uh, the 75. Yeah, but you know, whatever. Yeah, if we're just if we're counting numbers, who cares? Well, uh, yeah. When you go overclocked, I've seen an instance today where we're actually pulling 100 watts over the 12 volt over 12 line of the volt power through the of PCI the, the, Express connection on the motherboard. Yeah, so I have some questions in with some people about how scary this honestly is. We you know are the motherboard manufacturers concerned? I have a meeting yeah. set up with AMD tomorrow to talk about it as well. Did, um, did you check your? So IRP MSI settings? and everyone's been uh, yeah. pumping up their PCIe connectors lately. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> are those metal reinforcements actually heat sinks? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. They're electrically charged now with all Alan, the extra wattage. Alan did the math, <laughs> and if you're drawing, um, I think we I calculated that the traces between the PCI Express. Uh, the traces uh, to get to the slot. Yeah, from the 24-pin ATX power connector motherboard to yeah. the slot would have to dissipate about three watts. Yeah, because yeah. there was a, there was a voltage <laughs> droop. Like the voltage was actually yeah. dropping by almost half a volt. That, that's not a lot of metal. To, to, yeah, for but I mean and the PCB of, is big. It's not a lot of pins. It's only five pins that carry the 12 volts to the card, and those are not large pins with not a lot of surface area. The PCB well, is get big. bigger after it's you run it for a while. Oh yeah, yeah <laughs> they puff up. Yeah. So um, well. I'm. I have a bunch of data that we collected today about it that I'm going to do right up. And like I said, I have a meeting with AMD yeah. in the morning, um, as well as uh, some calls into some of the motherboard guys to talk about: Are they concerned with it, or is this kind of within the, their internal development tolerances? Right. You know, they, we actually build it to if if you draw 150 watts through it, we don't really care. Right. 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 Yeah. That would be interesting to know from uh, from a motherboard guy's standpoint. Uh, I'll, I'll finish up with VR performance is good. It matches the performance of the 970 or a little bit above. So if the 970 used to be the minimum standard for VR systems, the RX 480 can now be for significantly or at least a noteworthy amount less yeah. money. I mean, it was virtually identical yeah. result. Like the, these per, these overhead percentage numbers are 28.4% versus 28.9%. Yeah. So less than a half percent difference between them. I call that within a margin of error uh, for yep. sure. So uh, VR for cheaper than the headset. Oh, way cheaper. Oh, way cheaper than yeah, the headset. Yeah, yeah. Well, even the 970 was cheaper than it. Uh, ah, fair but enough. This is even cheaper. The 970 <laughs> was 329 before all the card releases started to come out. Now it's like 280. Um, you can buy it for yeah. Um, and this is 199 for the four gig, four gig version, 239 for the eight gig version. So that's 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 hey, important. It's getting cheaper, that's and important. you know, if you're gonna have to spend 700 bucks on a headset, then uh, you know you might as well. Yeah. Save some money on the graphics card. Yeah. <laughs> so in conclusion, 
It's a pretty good video card. Yeah. I think um, the the good and the bad of this huge build up to it is they were able to build some excitement. The bad is you built up so much excitement that the card wasn't. I think a lot of people had it in their mind that the 980 was going to go down to this. Like the, the GTX yeah, and it was going to be far more efficient in power yeah. than it actually is. Yeah. Because, you know, matching 970 performance at the same kind of power envelope is not yep. what we were expecting. Yep. I, I, I agree. Um, they basically made a Maxwell. Yeah. Right? That's probably On a, a fair... 14 nanometer process. Yep. yep. The Maxwell 2.0. That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so it's not fundamentally the huge architectural advantage that we thought, but... But they are and, selling and it be- for cheaper. I believe that's important. I really do. But at the end of it, gamers are more than willing to sacrifice 20 or 30 or 40 watts of power if they can get good performance for cheaper. Sure. Right. The problem AMD had is they didn't have better performance throughout the whole 300 series, you know, product lines and 200 series. Really, if you want to get into it, um, but with this, they actually have an advantage in performance, and they've improved on it. Um, yeah. And and Raja was very upfront with us when he talked about this type of stuff. He's like, we don't have a 1.2 billion dollar R and D budget. We have a quarter of that, right, yeah. or something, they something to that effect. Yeah. Well, you know, um, and. They don't expect gamers to feel sorry for AMD. You know, gamers only care about what the end product is, and that's all they should have to worry about. They don't really care how much money you're spending to make the thing. Sure. Just make the thing that they want to yeah. buy better. Um, and this is a card people will want to buy. They sold out. So either they, you know, will have the same argument about did they make too, did they not yeah. make enough? Could they not make enough? Or is demand so high that they sold through in day one? Uh-huh. Um, you know, but well, what was that rumor? Uh, Eight thousand pieces for North America. I have not when heard you, that at all. When this? you for for yeah for for, for the RX four eighty. <clears throat> and supposedly, if you think about, you know, there's Vision Tech selling it, Newegg, uh, you know, other manufacturers, yep. you know, XFX places, and NCIX, MSI and yeah. eight thousand is it's still a lot of pieces for. I guess so. I really don't have anything to compare that to in relative. Terms, terms, right? Like because yeah. everybody is pretty about tight on that 20, information. I think they're about ten or twenty ten eighty cent, weren't they? <laughs> All out to reviewers. Uh, actually, apparently, uh, somebody sent me a tweet that said they went to their micro center today and they were out sold out of four eighties in the afternoon, but they had like twenty five GTX ten seventies huh. in stock. Yeah, I saw ten seventies are in stock at ours. Are they? Yeah. Today. So they're getting out there. They're getting out there. So that's the RX four eighty. Um, uh, we'll follow up on the power stuff next week or just go to PCPro.com. I'll probably have something uh, posted up there tomorrow. Um, and I would really actually encourage everybody to go look at, or watch that interview we did with Raja because he talks very bluntly about, like, this is just the first step. We know we haven't done anything now. It was refreshing. The level we still of just need to like, compete it was just, at the high end. Like, we know we need to do that. Yeah. Yes, we're going to make big GPUs still. We're not only doing this, um, but we're going to do it in a way that we – have planned to do it the whole time since RTG radio technologies group was founded. Yep. Uh, and we believe we're on, on that path correctly still. So yeah, um, it certainly seems, I mean, one last thing Yeah. is AMD has always had this problem with Intel is that their CPUs, they have to do a lot of automated place and route. They just have to utilize that software because they can't afford all of the engineers to do hand place transistors for every single piece that's why in the past with like the i7s versus the original bulldozer intel had fewer transistors but they had much better performance and much better thermals as compared to bulldozer right and amd you know through that next year they they did a lot more optimization and ha- hand route in place with vishera and they improved their their thermals and yeah i guess a little bit in performance fairly fairly dramatically but they're facing the same thing. I mean, it's a company that fired a lot of people and yeah. you only have so many designers in there and, and engineers that can do this work and they're keeping their head above water and they've got competitive parts. They're not quite at the same level in ways than what NVIDIA has, but they were smart enough to introduce features that NVIDIA does not. And so, you know, of course, one of the big debates is this async con- compute and and i know that there are some titles that 
that really benefit from it. And there are others that don't at all. And that is really up to the developer and who they're working with and how they code. And so you kind of got to keep that in the back of your mind of what you're going to play, what you're going to buy and, and what's at the price point. And so it's a little disappointing with the RX 480, but when you keep going back to the price, it becomes a lot more interesting. I mean, certainly we're yeah. not going to see GTX 970s going down to the 239 price anytime soon. Sure, they've hit 279 after manufacturer uh, mail-in rebate, but who who actually mails those in? I mail them in. Yeah, sure you do. Get but you know, you're you're trying to get Ken through school and stuff during that time. But anyway. <laughs> Um, you know, they, they, they try to keep a price advantage and no, we they're going to, they're going to do that no matter what. Yep. I, I'm, I'm, I'm still very hopeful. Like I still like the product a lot. I still think it's actually a really, really good product. Um, so we'll, 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 uh, continue to do our, our digging and testing and hopefully get a second one in pretty soon to do our, our crossfire testing as well. Um, okay. That was a long discussion. It was an important product. Uh, other stuff happened. All right, end of the episode. No, no. Uh, quick <laughs> touch big on. Review you wrote. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's just you know, it's you know the RX forty took all uh, took all the excitement out. Of I, it. Know, but I know. But the uh, Huawei MateBook on a completely different topic is a Windows tablet powered by Intel Core M processor. It is a completely fanless design, uh, very thin. Uh, really good looking, uh, I think, in terms of it's 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 fairly modest. It's got a, a metallic back to it. It's available in, in um, uh, silver or gold, you know, type finish. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and actually, I did find out the silver one does have a black mat around uh, a okay, bezel good. around the side. Um, and it is meant to be kind of a Surface Pro Four style competitive device, right? It has a keyboard dock mm-hmm. called a portfolio keyboard. It has an active stylus. It has an external um, like dock that expands to additional USB and, and Ethernet and stuff like that. The screen looks really the good. The screen is amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, 2160 by 1440, so it's a 4 by 3 resolution So do you panel. sing the song when you look at the screen? What, what song? No. Look no. at my screen. My screen is amazing. No, we don't sing Oh, yeah. No, Give I do. Give a lick. Yeah. Tastes just don't like use my mate book. You don't want to. You don't want to use my mate book. Yeah. No. If you don't, oh, the, the, but the viewing, like the viewing yeah. angles on that screen are like you can literally just any angle. Like it's just yeah. it, it doesn't do any kind of you know. How does the angle look when you're skipping it across a lake? <laughs> Pretty uh, good until the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when it sinks. Yeah. Skip it all the way across. It is a. It's a 12 inch screen, 2160 by 1440 IPS, and here's the different configurations as I know them. Um, they have two core M3, two core M5, two core M7 options, four gig, eight gig varieties, 128 up to 512 gigs of SSD storage, um, 80211 AC. Uh, uh, it's fairly light, 1.4 pounds for just the tablet itself, 30, 33.7 watt hour battery, so you're going to get decent battery life. And it starts at 699 right? So it starts $200 less. Is, is Johnny She moonlighting for these people? You never know. Maybe that's why he's getting off tell. the board. You don't know. Um, for two hundred dollars less than the than the cheapest Surface Pro Four, which mm-hmm. uses the same processor, same amount of memory, same amount of storage, um, you can get the Huawei MateBook, right? And then you still have to add in the same kind of accessories either way, right? Uh, but actually, the Huawei MateBook accessories are less than the the Surface currently. Currently, yeah. There's a there's a bundle deal. Is there? Like you, you, you know, even even without the bundle, okay, they're still okay, less expensive. Okay. But with the bundle, it's it's significantly less expensive. Um, this is the device, kind of like uh, with all the accessories in tow. You've got uh, switch over this photo here, where you've got the the tablet with your portfolio keyboard on it, which kind of it's both a little protector case thing, as well as you know adds a little. You can get a bunch of different colors, but I like the way it looks. Um, and then you've got the, the weird dock thing with the loop sticking out of it that I'll, I'll show a little bit closer. It is a USB type C connection, USB 3.0 type C connection. Um, and that's the only port port on it other than the headphone jack yeah. on it, which, which is a little bit kind of annoying, disappointing, uh, sleep, wake button up top. You've got a dedicated volume rocker. And that actually thing in the middle there is a fingerprint sensor yeah. that works really well. My primary complaint about it is that 
if you use that as your login method for Windows, mm -hmm. which it works very well if you're setting it up like a like a, a, a clamshell style design. Sure. If you're using it in a portrait mode <laughs> where oh. you're writing on it, yeah. either the depending on how you rotate it, either the it's at the top or, or the it's at the bottom, like against your body. And do, it's not do you feel to dirty hit. when it's on the bottom and you have to swipe your finger? You Listen. don't. You don't swipe. You only tap. Thank yeah. you very much. So you and can it's just not his finger either. You, yeah, you just program it to something else in your in your set. Hey, you can make a, anything as a fingerprint if you think. <clears> of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a little bit wonky because of that. Three and a half <laughs> millimeter jack on it. The. Damn it, Jeremy. Uh, uh, let's see. There's a picture of the screen. I can't, I can't take a good picture of the screen, but yeah. it's an amazing screen. The keyboard itself is actually really nice, too. Um, it's got fairly decent key throw or key travel in it. Backlit. It's backlit uh, with four different levels of brightness. Yeah. It just uses a Pogo connection um, to the tablet to um, uh, for data and power, so it's not Bluetooth or anything like that. And it uses an iPad-style um, triangle had like thing to, oh, to it fold hold it, it does to origami to yeah, like, you yeah, know. yeah 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 now the, it works okay better than i thought it would in terms of like the magnet strength in terms of i was able to use it on my lap sitting on the couch yeah uh, and it didn't like fall apart fall apart on me right <laughs> the disappointing part is it only has two settings like two angles For, of yeah. adjustment yeah which as i as somebody who uses laptop all the time like having access to the full range is is definitely beneficial um the pin, uh, the stylus works really well. Mm -hmm. My main complaint is this thing right here, this like little, here's how it's going to attach to your keyboard dock. It's <laughs> this little magnetic loop. When you try to pull the pin out, you just take the whole loop off with yeah, it. Like the, loop, a, the loop is not, it looks, it's hard to tell in the picture, but the yeah. loop is just magnetically attached to that back of the keyboard cover. Yeah. Like, so, so you just, just it just off. comes right off. Oh, yeah, you can sort of see it. That's which weird. also Which also worries me about losing the pen. Yes. Like it happened to me. I had it sitting in my passenger seat yeah. with the pin side down and I just picked it up to come inside of the office and had stay in the, the car. pin stayed in the car. Yeah. It's still better than the surface. True. The surface of... the magnetic on the side of the tablet. Oh I know. I was thinking of the surface three. Where the loop well, the, one where the you fabric kill it loop. You, you just had a fabric loop that you like taped to the keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and the surface book surface pro four magnet thing is, is similar to this. There's is a little bit stronger, a little bit better attachment, but it's a similar complaint i don't i guess just don't lose it so here's the dock you get uh, a type c pass through for power it gives you two usb 3.0 ports uh, a gigabit ethernet port an hdmi and a vga connection as well that's it's, on the other side on the other side yeah. um performance is okay it's a core m based processor it's gonna be able to do any of your normal compute productivity tasks mm -hmm. if you're doing like heavy photo editing it's going to be slow i was able to play of course um the staple. Rocket League. Rocket League on it at the minimum, minimum image quality settings. And I must tell you, it looks like a very different game. <laughs> it looks like, more like go karts. Than, uh, yeah. Uh, is that yeah. micro machines? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's not a result of the quality. It, like, it, like, yeah, it just looks very different. But, but I could do it. I could play it. Um, the Witness didn't play very well on it, but I was able to play Overwatch on really? it. And it's 720p or whatever the equivalent is resolution. Very, very low specs. I mean, that's what Blizzard does, right? They're, they're good at that type of stuff. Um, battery life is okay. About five and a half hours. Uh, equivalent to the uh, Microsoft Surface Pro 4. Considering how thin it is and that the keyboard has no battery to it, I'm okay with that. And um, it's... it's 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 pretty good now. Do, do you know the like the weight difference between that and the Surface Pro Four? Uh, well, what was this? Uh, one point something. This was one point four one pounds. Um, and I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah. I, I compared it to the weight of the iPad. It's it's actually lighter than the iPad uh, Pro. Yeah, the small one. Yeah. 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 So I, I think it's going to be lighter than the Surface Pro Four by some yeah. amount because but, like. It's it's a con, it's a comparable battery life, but there's an i5 in the Surface, Surface Pro, Pro 4, 4 uh, 1.7 pounds. Okay, so hmm. three tenths of a pound yeah. less, and I don't know what the difference is in all the accessories and stuff. But yeah, and I mean, like the Surface Book, if you get that, it's a much bigger device. Was over nine hours of and battery. It's got life. a second battery. It's got a second battery, yeah. right? But like my Dell XPS 13, when it was brand new, measured almost eight hours of battery life. Yeah. Right. So. I definitely get the argument that, like, what I would like to have seen is that dock 
the like the little mate dock that they have. Right. Make it a little bit bigger. Give it a battery inside that, like an external battery. And in sure. theory, um, you said they sell Type C batteries for the MacBook. Yeah, like Anchor sells Type C. I didn't try batteries. it yet, but I would have to imagine those would work. Yeah, they, they just do with deliver like the fifteen watts. I was disappointed that like standard USB chargers that are rated at fairly high power wouldn't charge this. Yeah. Right? Like with our type A to type C cables, but I, I know that's still kind of a, a growing trend, right? Um, so that's the Huawei Matebook. I actually really like it. Um, I've been kind of searching for that tablet device that is that also you, a laptop. That you actually use as a tablet, like a pad. Yeah, like I take, while I'm doing testing, I want to be able to take notes and write down ideas and notes and then swap between projects and like I use a physical notepad piece of uh, pieces of paper still. Yeah. Right. And I would like to be, uh, I would like to grow up and join the digital age, but I need, I need, I don't want to carry two devices to do it. If I'm going to carry two devices, I'll carry a laptop and a piece of pad of paper uh, that doesn't have a battery life issue. Right. So that's, there you go. And this is this is actually um, a comparison to the iPad Air 2? No. Did they stop numbering those or is that iPad Air 2? Which one whichever one we have up there. It's the iPad Air 2. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So you can see it's almost as thin as an iPad Air 2. It's 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 in there. It's a pretty nice device. Um, so I, I like it. Check out the review if you are interested in seeing what a completely passive Intel Core M Windows 10 based device can be. Uh, and uh, I yeah, it came away pretty. It really is just like your, the first impression of it, just like. Yeah, well, even you know, even Raja was here today, and he saw it sitting on the table, and he goes, "Ooh, what's this?" And he's yeah. picking up, and he's looking at it. Yeah, and, it's just like you know, as, he, as, he wanted to know more about it because it was impressively thin, and it was yeah. really well built and designed. Thin and light, plus like just relatively huge screen. Yeah. You know. Yep. It's just eighty-four yeah. percent body to screen ratio. Oh. Was a number Ooh. that I, I somehow got hammered into my head. I didn't write right. it, but I did. I did remember it. Marketing at its finest. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, let's get to these news items quick, guys. Steam sale, Jeremy. What's up with this? Uh, well, it's it's a Steam sale. Personally, it's <laughs> been kind of meh for me. I don't think I've spent yeah. more than sixty, sixty-five bucks so far. <laughs> I bought Fallout. Got to do sat. Yeah, Fallout Four. There's a mean? bunch Fallout of 4. new stuff. Which for people is going to be really good, including Doom, which is just barely out. I don't 40% understand that. off. That's that's a good. That's a great game. If you haven't bought to Doom get forty percent off then, already. Yeah, this yeah. is the time. Yeah, I'm just so desperately behind in everything. I'm thinking, yeah, I'll see what the Christmas sale is like. You know, by the time uh, I get through Fallout, honestly, 3. one of my favorite one was 3D Mark, uh, which we posted about. It was on sale. You could pick up the full retail version for about six bucks. Yeah, which, also. Also, keep in mind, deal. during these sales, this is the time where if you're worried about giving a gift later, like what I've done is I've bought extra copies of games during the sales that you can then later gift. You just hoard everything. I don't have like a whole <laughs> crap load of them, but just like... You sound you, almost if you have, shocked. If you have somebody that you know is something's coming up for and you want to get it for them, but give it to them then, not now, then you can buy it now during the sale, lower price. It sits in your little like a gift queue thing, yeah. or you know, yeah, you like just an inventory. indicate that you're buying it as a gift at checkout. Yeah, yeah you have yeah. to specify that yeah. you're buying it as a gift, and it'll it'll sit in a separate spot, and then you can just gift it to the person later. Yeah, it's it's you're you know, all it's getting handy. Doom for Christmas, just <laughs> so you know. I've bought twenty copies Doom. of Doom for everybody, <laughs> uh, and the, the, it's still early days. They're still going on until the fourth. Oh, okay. So I mean, there's going to be plenty more deals coming out. They've been switching it up nicely. Uh, I'd like to see a little more of the ND stuff uh, go on sale because there's a couple that I was sort of holding out for. But yeah. uh, I did pick up Talos Principle, which I hadn't picked I, up. I've before. only played a, like an hour of that or so. It was really cool. It seems pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I bought that and I've never played it. Like 95% me too. of the rest of my Steam. <laughs> yeah. But I bought it yesterday, so I don't feel so bad. <laughs> it's only been recently sitting in my Steam that's, library. That's untouched. why they can't trick me. I haven't looked at the Steam sale yet because I won't uh, play yeah. any of it, so I won't buy any of it. That's a good point. Uh, another quick note. Remember, I think it was two weeks ago we talked about Oculus um, uh, preventing people DRMing. from. People had figured out a way to play Oculus games on a Vive. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. Um, yep. It then, does a hardware check. Yeah, they had changed it to Oculus do a hardware check in? to ask if you actually had one connected. They didn't used to do it. Now they have removed it again. Yeah. Which I find funny because they talked about how it wasn't a DRM check before. It was like they were solving some other problem and, oh, this just happened to be a result of it. And regardless, the 
the people who made the compatibility layer to make the Oculus games play on Vive cracked the DRM in yeah. about 12 oh, yeah, hours. Oh, they, they okay. had cracked it. They're yeah. like, well, okay. we didn't want to have to crack the DRM to let people steal games, but here you go. Yeah. This is the only way to make this work. And then they came out again. Oh, man. So uh, I, I want to thank Scott for using this amazing photo of me back from our original, was DK2? No, that's the original. Is that original DK1? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can tell Alan wasn't here yet because this other desk was actually a little open <laughs> in the background. You can see the painting. You can see the, the wall. Photos. Yeah. Yeah, that's all covered with SSDs now. So that's good to know that maybe the move towards an open uh, VR ecosystem is is maybe a little bit more real than we might have been led to believe after the Oculus issue began. Um, so we were curious about how long the RX480 was going to have this market to itself. <laughs> and according to this image uh, leaked out, which I swear every time I look at this, I feel like the GTX 1060 is sitting on a... Burger King wrapper. Yeah. Yes. Some somebody unwrapped their burger. Yeah. And no. Suddenly a, a wild 1060. It appears. has a Windows 8 logo on it. <laughs> well, maybe they're giving away. A, wait, they what? Did, they it did, does. You're they right. did do that Windows 7 burger in Japan with Burger King, though, right? Yeah. I it was like I think it was Windows 7 or Windows Vista. Yeah. There's a Windows logo on there. Oh man. Um, huh. So this is apparently what the GTX 1060 looks like. Josh, Jeremy? 1060? Oh, yeah. It's it's, 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 1060. I just wrote wrote their marketing for them. Holy crap. Yes. You know, know, the the great part around the fan looks like a a fighter that that could have been in uh, Descent uh, Free Space. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. It's it's, it's definitely a different um, design from the 1070, 1080. Uh, That looks like a window, but I don't think it's a window. Yeah, you can't see anything behind it. I don't... I don't know. It's still got a Founders Edition vibe going, though. It sure. does, yeah. yeah. I mean, it still follows their ID, it's but it's, it's changed. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, obviously, you know, it's a lower price card. It's going to have to be probably built a little bit differently. It's probably just a plastic house. We don't really know yeah. anything else other than this. Um, they they c- quote this post that says it will most likely use a GP106 GPU with at least 1,280 CUDA cores. Earlier rumors suggested that it might get 6 gigs of memory and 192-bit memory bus and that is from video cards and with a z it'll use a two pin pcie power connector yeah yeah a two pin <laughs> just, just a two pin just grounds yeah just yeah, just two yeah, grounds, just just grounds. So that's all it needs <laughs> so that's i mean that's it for this 1060 but you know when you start to see these these cards come up you know it's not far behind when you got a picture of a complete card in a like, hamburger wrapper that's been 3d printed yeah it could have been <laughs> i don't know coming soon what what is what I wish I could read Chinese Capital, Capital. Shop customers is looks that like this PCB is ending sooner yeah it looks like the PCB ends before the uh, the cooler so huh. that seems to be all the trend and certainly not the first time we've ever seen that and stuff these days but there you go bring on the competition as the first comment says I agree uh, clearly AMD didn't it, th- this rumor and news didn't prevent Andy from selling out their first rounds of RX four eighties but you know. Speaking of rumors of new video cards, uh oh, more. They just keep coming. They just keep coming. Apparently, this is this is great, Jeremy. I love this one. Apparently, AMD leaked this one themselves. <laughs> what the R five four twenty? What? Scroll to the very bottom. What? R five four twenty. Blaze it. Oh, R R five four twenty. Is that a five Yolo, or an S? Yeah. Swag. Blaze it. <laughs> oh, okay. What, what? <laughs> but but what is more interesting here? Oh, you mean the RX 490? Yeah. Now that's going to be an interesting I can't card. Can't believe they just did that. I don't, and I'll it, get it. It, the best part is that they they there as you right said here. are the ones who did this. Now it wasn't a leak. It was just a yeah. So I, I swear to our new church, I actually don't know if an RX 490 exists. Right, a lot of times, some I, intern is just pulling our. A leg lot of times, if I say I, I can't say anything, it's because I know whether or You've not that briefed. rumor is true. Right. right. Yeah. I, I don't know anything about an RX four hundred and ninety, um, but if it's on this cool. list, I find it really and it's and it's it's so odd that things are out of order. Like the RX, they uh, are very weirdly ordered. No, it's not even because like the RX four hundred and seventy is over here. No, yeah, okay, no, at, no, 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 no. The they're RX going left to right. They're and going then left the 480 right. and then yeah, yeah, 470, yeah. 460. And, yep. and hey, there's a you're mobile right. 485X. Now, if you're Jewish, you'd be reading it totally different. And yeah. Japanese, who the fuck knows? Yeah, I don't know. For, so RX 490, I don't, do you guys think that's Vega? 
in that far away? Do you think it's a bigger Polaris chip? I Maybe know. it's a dual Polaris chip. It could be a dual Polaris yeah. GPU. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Also with one eight six pin? pin power connector. <laughs> oh, <eight> pin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna send this card back, guys. Thank you. Uh, no, I'm not plugging this one in. And I'm not. Uh, Why does it come with its own little fire extinguisher? <laughs> it's built in. It's a little mini built-in fire extinguisher. Wait, wait a minute. You included a you included a six pin to wall connector. That yeah. can't be right. Yeah, it just goes straight into the wall. Before you open this box, you need A-Lo. to sign a waiver that your motherboard will not burst into flames. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, so that's that's that. Um, hopefully everybody has their Windows 10 upgrades in order, or you've sued for ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. Yeah, isn't that what it was, Jeremy? Yeah, and yeah, that's what she got too. Did you get your ten thousand really? dollars? Oh damn! No, I didn't missed my chance. Yeah, but so his was ten thousand. Like that Canadian. poor guy on satellite that had his entire budget destroyed by the Force Win 10 down. The, the, so you yeah. didn't hear that story about? No, some, I saw the satellite. Some woman, one. but no, a woman sued Microsoft in California. Yep. That for ten thousand dollars, that her machine upgraded to Windows ten yeah. without her wanting to, right? And it cost her some amount of time of her work and job. Well, or she something downgraded like back to Windows seven. The machine became essentially unusable. Yeah, and yeah, she was using it for business purposes. She got her ten grand. We'll I, see if this is which is an insane amount of money for that problem. But to Microsoft means no, nothing. They but they freaking deserve crap like that with the way that they yes. pushed. You know, and 10. because of that, I assume now the Windows 10 prompt has been changed. Yeah. So now it oh, asks you, you the, the red X means close again. Yeah, it actually closes and does not <laughs> just mean, oh, you mean you want me to install that later? OK, thank uh, you. I'll just do that. There's an upgrade now, a choose time and a decline free offer. Yeah. Button that I don't think or at least there before. will be when they push this update. Ah, uh, OK. I mean, mm-hmm. this is how it should have been from the beginning. Well, I still well, think it was the beginning. Missing. But then no, it it's, it's well. I mean, it's and not a button. Mean, it's not a button. What? No, there's a button missing in like. What? what? Tell me later. Like it, it, either upgrade now or choose a time. Like if I don't want to do it right now, I don't necessarily have a time in mind. You could say, when I upgrade "Tell me mine. in a week." Yeah, but just but does choose yeah. a time just automatically do it? Yeah, or does know. it ask you again? Um, in the chat, there, you the can close, choose a time, the close pick a time, button, or say "remind me later." Okay. The close button dismisses the notification okay. without accepting it. So, or at least if this like it is like it was about three or four months ago. Yeah, before it probably comes back. It. Like if you just red X it, it probably comes mm. back yeah. later. Well, but, for a while there, red Xing it meant yeah, choose okay. time, and that time was next time you try to power off your computer. Yeah, they, they actually destroyed a part of their UI. Where the red X no longer make think, clothes. Do you think Microsoft's worried about like class action, lots of people doing this? This woman was apparently, according to Biohazard in the chat, a travel agent. Yeah. <laughs> right. They don't make ten thousand dollars. So if it's a high if it's a high if it's a ritzy travel agent. If it's a ritzy travel agent and also they may have been for like the sales they would have gotten, not the profit yeah. they would have do, gotten. Do you, yeah. do you know well. the no, no, do you know the software that they probably use for that? Oh, it's probably barely works oh, yeah. on like Windows Seven, it's and probably because there's so few oh, yeah. travel agents, <laughs> nobody ever updates the stuff, and Windows Ten just broke all the but things. It's like Honestly, going to the airport yeah. and watching the, the 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 gate agent type into like a green screen terminal. Yeah. Print out on dot matrix exactly. printers. Yeah, they still print out. You know, yeah, on dot matrix printers, the the passenger lists and stuff like that. A, a buddy of mine. Well, used hey, to on do... the plus side, at this point, that's almost unhackable because nobody knows how to run the damn things anymore. <laughs> A buddy of mine used to do um, real estate appraising and wanted to upgrade to a newer version of Windows, and he had to he had to um, import his old system into a VM just mm-hmm. so that he could run Sounds a newer version right. of Windows. And he had to log into this separate VM every time he wanted to like do his his job, basically. So, so I've got a question. <laughs> yes, the, Ken. the free Windows 10 upgrade ends in so about I, in a month. In yeah. Exactly. Well, month. Yep. they say it ends in a month. It probably will. Sure. Then we'll change how the number. Clean up all of these updates uh, so that you're no longer getting those prompts to say upgrade now. Yeah. Sure. Because what happens if you upgrade now and they oh, wait? <laughs> do we send them a bill for 120 bucks or not? Oh yeah, like what if it's already on your system and you're already right. like because it is, and it's the thirtieth, and then you hit upgrade and you're now. offline for a little bit. <laughs> you so you have to get assume that update you- pulled out. You have to assume that it's still going to be free after July twenty. Yeah, yeah. You don't offer something Pretty for much. free for eight months. It was a year. a year. A full year? It was a full year. And then suddenly go, 
Now you assholes have to pay a hundred bucks, right? Like, well, unless you're a cable company. I don't know. They've said that the entire time. Yeah. Like, why would they say that? I, I don't. I don't. Because they want everybody to upgrade. Because they want everybody to go. Mm. Like knowing, being familiar with know. how Windows updates work and how they don't work, you're going to have a percentage where those updates, which are bringing those prompts up right now, are not cleanly uninstalled quickly. Yeah, or you know, I, uninstalled ever. They're going to be hanging around. There will still be a few zombie upgrades that they're going to have to deal with. Well, they would just let those fly. They better, because that's an even worse can of worms, and they've been handling this so well. Yeah, you know, you imagine I, I just that. Keep you having the movie The Kingsman come to mind about <laughs> the free upgrade to internet service for everyone. What's going to oh, happen? Yeah. That wasn't Kingsman. Never saw it. Yeah, it was it's a good right. flick. Was yeah, it's like a good it. flick. You should watch it. I've the heard it was yeah. the free internet was a diabolical violent. plan. It was surprisingly good. Surprisingly violent too. Yeah. Oh yes. Uh, yeah. No, non surprisingly violent, but it, it looks more like a comedy in the previews. No, it got pretty violent. And yeah, that's that was my understanding. There was like it was cuts a like a James Bond, a little more violent generation. than other cuts. It was impressively violent too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Before we get to our hardware <laughs> software picks of the weeks, uh, I have two people here to thank for their pledges: uh, Casey Calgianis. I'm going to see if Italian? I can get it. I'm Calgiana? K-A-L-O. I'm oh, going to no. say it's probably not. Greek. Uh, pledge $3. Thank you very much. And um, the wildly popular in the chat, Michael DePorter, has edited their pledge to $50. Awesome. Per month. Thanks, wow, dude. Wow. Thanks. So thank you very much, sir. Uh, we'll probably be seeing you very soon. So um, and that doesn't mean I'm going to hunt you down. <laughs> In any way like that, I just mean you got fifty, you got five hundred. I'm gonna put one through this your is head before you Quake edit Con. it down to two dollars right, so, and fifty cents yeah. a month. We'll see, we'll see him there. So uh, thank you guys very much for that. We 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 greatly appreciate it. All right, let's get into our hardware software picks of the week. I am um, cheating a little bit here and going with that uh, Huawei MateBook. It's a good device. Sold through the Microsoft Store, ironically. Whoa, wait, what? And um, one <laughs> thing I forgot to mention really in the reviews. Ironic. That's, well, a, that's a I denial mean, of surface attack. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's part of their, what do they call that program? Signature edition. The signature edition. So there's n- like, there's no bloatware on this at all. There's no, okay. there's no, it's a clean install, install of Windows 10. There's no Norton BS. There's none of that. Like when you turn on, it goes and it's fast and there's no issues. Nice. Um, it is available uh, for pre-order now. I think it ships July 11th. Uh, and you can see you can get down to six ninety nine, or you can go up to. It looks like they're only offering the uh, eleven ninety nine model, which is uh, five hundred twelve gigs SSD. The one I would pick if I were to buy one, I would get the nine ninety nine version that is eight gigs of memory, two hundred fifty six gigs of storage, and, yeah. and be good with that. And it's the M five and the M five processor, which really only differs a little bit in clock speed, like a, a tiny, tiny little bit. Yeah. Um, the I, I think the upgrade from four gigs to eight gigs, one hundred twenty to two fifty six, three hundred dollars is a bit of a stretch for that. True, but you can't do it after the fact. Yeah, right. Especially with um, that thing. Yeah, so does uh, not come apart. Yes, uh, I agree. So, and I guess also for three hundred bucks, you're getting the slightly faster processor too. Yeah. So if you consider one hundred dollars per part. It seems worth it for that, but if you go kind further, if you go further past that, you're just kind yeah, of yeah. If you go to the five twelve gig, you're adding two hundred bucks more. So 200 bucks for 256 gigs of storage. It's not terribly unreasonable. No. Um, Do you but know what drive it is? Do you know what is in there? It is... Uh, uh, we looked this up. Um, yeah, but I forgot what it was. I forgot what it was, too. It was, it was something... It was an M.2. It was fast. It's fast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an M.2 part. It was an M.2. We were like we were surprised they could get it in there, but we thought maybe it was an M.2 base, but soldered onto the PCB yeah. type type thing, like basically the controller. We should, we should rip it open. Um, probably not. <laughs> Probably not going to do that. So uh, that's available. It'll be available at Newegg, Best Buy, Amazon, and the Microsoft Store. But the only place I've actually seen it uh, available for its pre-order is on uh, the Microsoft Store. So, and I think they're, I think they might be in the Microsoft stores already. So if you have one of those near you, you can uh, you can already those go there. Those things are in a lot of places and uh, try it out for yourself. They keep planting them within a twenty foot radius of an Apple Store. The Microsoft Store. Yeah. yeah weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jeremy. I'm still disturbed by Alan's condom pick, but uh, so it's been two weeks since I showed you how to get System Shock 2 for free. So obviously you're now hooked uh, on System Shock if you've never played it before. I've been reminded and the second you hear Terry Brocious' voice, you, you get chills down your spine. So the Kickstarter today kicks off for the System Shock reboot. 
Uh, it's already past half a million bucks. And it looks pretty damn neat. They, they've kept a lot of the stuff. It, it's going to take a lot of money to get the proper one, where it's more of an RPG and you got weapon types and ammo types and stuff. But just they've brought her back to be the voice of Shodan again. Hmm. Huh. It, it's and it's they're going to re-record everything. Uh, if you haven't done her from that, she did almost all of Josh's favorite thief games. Uh, you would have heard her as Ava Johnson on Deus Ex Invisible War. Uh, she does kicked into a couple of uh, designs as well, uh, which I can't see off the top of my head to begin with. Uh, but uh, she, she, it's a voice you will recognize, and if you play System Shock, it just worries the hell out of you because it means something horrible is about to happen. <laughs> so toss into it. it. Right now, they've sold out of the $25 ones. It costs $30 to get in, but I'm sure they'll bring back a uh, $25 support level it's gonna be fun cool josh well, well, well welcome hacker <laughs> yeah your pick is uh, little nubbins it's lubbins nubbins lubies tiny nubbins that's not josh no pick. that's 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 you no, know what you you mixed Al's up condoms. alan and me you you yeah don't you put broke. don't put my rubbers on josh okay so Whatever this is insane this thing is a solid piece of metal with adjustable. Um, you can go from sequential to H. Oh, it's a shifter. It's got two different knobs. It's a shifter. It's like 200 bucks. But that thing is machined out of like a solid block of aluminum. Huh. You pay for it. <laughs> but you could actually use that as a smashing weapon against somebody that you may not like. Maybe. Because that damn thing is a good 10 pounds. You uh, clamp it to your desk. 3.15 kilos. 1.5 kilos? Really? No, no, it's a 3. packaging. 3.15. Yeah, so it's it's about, what, 8 pounds, 9 pounds? So it's somewhat close. But it looks pretty beefy. It's extremely beefy. You don't want it slipping on your desk. No. Well, no, okay. you, you do not. You clamp that puppy on it, in there, slip. and you can be Colin McRae. And do your sequential, or you know, you can you can be harder and and do your H shifter, which is you got to get a little used to it because the throw is is pretty slight as compared to you know, it's a short shift like Allen's VW. But uh, once you get used to it, boy, I think feels really nice. But you got to really cool. be into racing and you willing do. to mount that to got to really your be table into fake or, racing. Yeah. <laughs> Like this guy. This guy. Okay. Actually, that, that footage looks... Is that Gin Game? No. Oh, yeah. No. It, that's Oculus. I think that's in game. No, it was... Look at that grip. Oh, yeah. Do you have a fire suit, Josh? Uh, no, I do not. Do you, do you put helmet? all that stuff on when you're driving your... Uh... Do you put your helmet no, on? No, I, I put on my spandex and, oh. my, uh, and my slippers. Well, and then I... I I we'll have some isotoner model. gloves from the 80s. Yeah, your spandex are use. fire retardant, so it's, it's good. This guy's not even wearing a helmet. That's not safe. Yeah. Yeah. What if that, what if that whole rig flips why over? Is he not show- oh, there he is. Why is he not showing us his face? He's embarrassed. He should it's be. so nice, he says. They blurred out the wheel? He likes the shifter. Well, well it's probably like a, a, a Porsche wheel. They are oh. very protective. Yeah. 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 Especially there since he's wearing an Audi. Maybe they should have put a non-branded wheel on it when they recorded a video. Maybe. All right, Alan, I don't tell think us. They have any non-branded ones? Tell us about your nubbins, Alan. So, so you got you know like there's different phones out there that have cameras that stick out the back. Apple's oh guilty of it. Like, this is what you did this with. LG, whatever. What do you mean there are different phones that are? There good. are other ones with there's like a center camera that sticks out the back by a couple of millimeters as yeah, well. Yeah, but not like that it's HTC really 1050. Uh, it's mostly Apple. Yeah, anyway, so if you want that thing to sit flat on a desk, you can just get some furniture bumpers and put them on the four corners of the device. This, and add a, it adds a couple of millimeters to it. This. What? This is the it hack. It makes it look bigger. It's a hack. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're really small. They're just like clear. Johnny Eye. They're like clear urethane. Designed your product. So? 
to look and feel a specific way, and you're going to put rubber yeah. feet on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like he's not got a few on his shoes to make him look bigger. Not, not only that, but then like it doesn't it doesn't slide around on the desk either. Like it just it doesn't just slide off of stuff. Man, it works. I've never Man. had my phone slide no. off of anything. And since they <laughs> insisted, since they insisted on putting the protruding camera on the back of the iPad Pro, I did to that too. It's just to it's, fix it's it. Unnecessary. You should vote with your wallet flat. and not buy those products. Well, there we go, Josh. We better the, put these in the bottom your, of our beer bottles too. Your, your mate book <laughs> yeah. wasn't out yet. I might have bought one of those, but no, you, you know. wouldn't have. How Shut much? Up. Yeah, seven ninety nine for how many? A hundred of them. Yeah. I want you to put in over every what? millimeter of the back. You of your want phone. just the whole thing peppered? I want the whole thing, <laughs> just the whole thing, <laughs> and rubber nubbins. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah. it'd be a good bumper case then. Yeah, you'd be a hell of a rubber, rubber nipple salesman. The thing is, like, you got stuff around your house that, like, you lose a foot off of or something, and it's like, there are you know, plenty of other wobbles, uses for this whatever. thing. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. you I put the things in other that. places, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, if you know what I mean, right, Josh? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, but before you stick it somewhere, just make sure one of those rubber things is on it. Yeah, somebody in the exactly. says, why not buy a case? You actually have it in a case that's still not thick enough the to ca- No, the, the case, I, well, it's not a case, it's, the, it's that um, armor suit. Stick mm, on okay. thing, yeah. so it doesn't really add any thickness to it. See, like for me, this wouldn't work because the idea of having a piece of rubber feet as I p- put it in and in my pocket, it doesn't so really like it doesn't get in the way. The texture on the back, just of like it. Mm, they, maybe you know, they've worn down. It's some. Just unnecessary. You even had to cut a quarter. I had to, of I had it to cut a quarter out away of one. From the <laughs> yeah, so that the camera actually like makes it out of the thing. <laughs> I, I, so it's modded as well. Yes, I had to mod my you mod uh, the nubbin. Yes, mod you should have nubbin. filed down the lens. <laughs> I <had> just <laughs> to get it flat. Right, that would have resulted in a personal visit from Johnny Ive. Okay, so he probably would have thought, "Oh my God, look, you solved it. You solved our problem." I didn't think it was possible. Now come talk to me about this headphone jack problem we're having. It's now a, the it's not a problem. Oh no, that's, they solved. fixed that. They're getting rid of it. it, not, it, it yeah, like, I, I use my if you use the iPhone six, my iPhone a case has a case on it. Perfectly fine. And and, and it doesn't and, uh, sit flat. It's flat. Why? Like, no, your case. Him without a case. Why, without a case, it's it's frustrating. It it's it, it doesn't. It's so unnoticeable. What? How, I'm, like, I'm OCD. It bothers I mean, me. Like unless unless you press the top left corner, you can't See? really notice. Well, I just got to press the left side of it. You're, yeah, like you know, this, this, no. If the you, thing's if you press the bottom the table. left, it doesn't do it. No, no, but just like the top left. Yeah, all the way. Down yes, the if side. you push Why on the opposite corner, it doesn't do it. Why would I push on the there. top corner mm-hmm. of my phone when it's sitting on the table? Because it's a touch I, I think it's I think it's a dumb design decision. It doesn't like. Anyway, I don't think nubbins is the answer. I I don't think it's. But I think it's the. Best design, answer I could but, find. Yeah, nubbins, I don't think it's necessarily a good, a good design decision, but I think it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, I think it matters. Why? I think it matters because it's just dumb. <laughs> it's unnecessary. We need to finish this and drink bourbon. King Kuka right. Luka in the chat agrees with me. Alan is practical. Yes, I just wanted to uh, stop the thing. That's generally a bad song. The you sp- <laughs> yeah, you only see there were eight dollars for a hundred of them. That makes them what? Eight? No. This is pretty easy math here, right? Well, it's divided by a hundred. <laughs> Like more expensive piece. than an SSD. No, a hundred yes. divided. Yeah, you. I mean, that's you couldn't buy a case for that. No, I mean that's just, no, I couldn't. And you got all these uses for I'm, it now. I'm sticking them on everything. Leveling chairs in your kitchen. Yes. Um, that's it for the show this week, guys. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us. pcpercom slash podcast You can find all the back episodes, links to the RSS feeds, the videos. Uh, all the other stuff we do there, show notes, if you want links to any of the articles that we've discussed. Um, uh, another big thank you could uh, submits and contributes to our Patreon at patreon.com slash PCPro. We uh, really, really appreciate it. And again, we do record the show every Wednesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern and 7 p.m. Pacific. If you want to do that, uh, be notified about that or get a little reminder of it, go to PCPro.com slash subscribe, sign up for that notifications list. And you know, uh, before we do so, the next time. Uh, With that, we'll be back next week, and it'll be July, everybody. I'm Ryan Shrout. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. I'm Alan Malentano. Bye. See ya.